Hello, Internet people. My name is Adam Ripples Vox, and welcome to another weekend project. I've done a few of these now. I don't know entirely how many of them I've actually named the weekend project, but it's where we get down and dirty, no super flashy, you know, in front of the normal recording setup, and not super flashy B roll or anything like that. We're just gonna get down to the computer and sh or to the technology and show you what to do. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to tune up your computer. It's something that's very important to do every once in a while, and it's something that is still important to do, even though places like Staples and things like that, uh, Easy Tech Geek Squad would necessarily not have you believe it's as important now. Now they think they just need to check for viruses and then tell you that you have a million adware viruses installed on your computer. And you know, what they do is not very effective anymore. But I'm gonna show you the simplest way to actually uh, tune up your computer and improve it a little bit. Now it's not gonna improve your speed by tons and tons, but it's going to keep it in mostly working order. So let's flip around to the screen and check it out. All right, for this project, I am going to be using my fiance to my fiance choose computer here. It's a, one of our other gaming rigs that we don't use all the time, but we do use when we're doing co-op videos. And I haven't messed with it in a little while in terms of tuning it, tuning it up. So we're just going to give it a quick run through. This is a lot more important when you're doing it for the first time in a while. Um, we keep our computers in much more working order, but I do want to walk you through the basic steps. So the tool I'm going to be using is called C Cleaner. It's something I've recommended using for literally like 10 or more years now. It's been around for quite a while and 2005. So yeah, about 10 years. Uh, I've, it's been a great tool for this entire decade and it hasn't honestly changed that much, but the functionality is kept up to date. Now it is free. There is paid versions, which I don't necessarily recommend starting out with, but I would recommend if you use it a lot, supporting them with it because it's the only way software like this can stay afloat. It is perfectly safe. You'll probably, you know, if you look for it, you'll see recommendations for this program a million other places developed by Piriform. Simply go to their piriform.com sleep cleaner, click download, and we're going to save it to the downloads folder and then run the installer. Now I did already have this installed, but it needed to be updated. And that's one of the things about this setup is that you always want to keep your software updated, but I'll get to that in a minute but I did need to update it. So I did go ahead and download the installer because that's all it's really going to have you do to update it. Wait for the, are you sure you want to run this pop up to pop up? Click yes. And then next, uh, you can choose whether or not you want a desktop shortcut. I go ahead and uncheck adding it to the recycle. Well, basically what these two checkboxes are going to do is if you right click recycle bin, it'll add run or open C cleaner buttons to that right click context menu. I, uh, that just gets in the way for me. I don't like having a bunch of context menu things. So I uncheck that. I'm going to go ahead and leave the desktop and start, start menu shortcuts there. Automatically check for updates. That's good. You want every time you open the program, it'll tell you if there's an update. Perfectly good. And enable intelligent cookie scan. I go ahead and leave that enabled. If you go to advanced, you can choose whether or not you want it for all users or just you. If you're the only one using your computer, don't worry about that. Tell it where to install, click next and click install again and it only takes a second to install here. It's not a super bulky app. It won't take up a ton of space, but it is something that I definitely recommend running at least like once a month, once every couple months, something like that. There's no like set amount and then uncheck view release notes and then leave run CCleaner checked, click finish, and it's going to go ahead and open it up. Now CCleaner here will tell you a few things about your computer as well, which version of Windows you're running. So Windows 10 Pro 64 bit in this case, your processor, AMD Phenom, blah, 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 how much RAM you have and what kind of graphics card is in your system. So that's useful for getting a little bit of information about your system. So I'm going to go ahead and maximize it here. And then I do want to walk you through the basic steps. So the first aspect of this program is the cleaner, which will clean off a bunch of temporary and trash files on your system that end up hanging around that you don't need. Now for me, since it cleans out the recycling bin as what well, bin as well, it ends up getting rid of like hundreds and hundreds of gigs because I'm always deleting big video files. For you, this could get rid of a ton at first, and then as you run it incrementally, may not get rid of much at all in the long run after that, but it, it can help clean up stuff that your computer still has to go through. Now it has two tabs, stuff related to Microsoft Windows specifically, and then application specific things. And we'll get into that in a second. Um, so the next module though is registry cleaner. This will clean up old registry entries. And this is important because as your computer's starting up and whenever your computer's opening programs and looking for programs to run, it will 
look through the registry, which is a part of Windows, for keys for your software. And the more garbage entries you have in your registry, the longer your computer takes to, does, to do stuff. So it's good to clean it out every once in a while. This is a Windows specific thing that isn't a problem in Linux or Mac, conveniently enough. Then you have the Tools tab, where you have a much better than the Windows built-in uninstallation option, so you can get rid of a bunch of software that you don't want installed. We'll walk through that. Startup, you can disable programs from starting up at when your computer turns on, which is very important. I usually keep this fairly managed, but I'll walk you through some of the basics. Browser plugins, Internet Explorer and Google Chrome. So you can manage what plugins are running and installed for Google Chrome or Internet Explorer or Firefox, etc., which is good for checking for viruses and things that you don't want running that could slow down your browser. Disk Analyzer can just kind of tell you what kind of files are using disk space. We're not really going to mess with that. There's also Duplicate Finder, which will find duplicate files. Again, not something I'm going to mess with, but if, you in, if you're someone who accidentally makes a bunch of file copies, you could use it. System Restore, you can manage your System Restore points. I don't mess with any of this, and I'm not going to recommend you do for the purposes of this basic tune-up tutorial. And then you can fully wipe a drive as well. What we want to mess with first here is actually going to Options and then Monitoring. By With the newer versions of the software, they have system monitoring that can automatically, you know, check your computer and clean out garbage files automatically and stuff. But most of this is actually restricted to the pro paid versions and it just kind of runs by default anyway, which is actually going to slow down your computer because it has to run at startup and it's always going to be running, which is using your computer's resources. You don't really want that. So instead, we're going to uncheck both enable system monitoring and enable active monitoring monitoring and hit yes because we do not want that and that is not going to interfere with your system so first let's take a look at cleaner so unless you use internet explorer or microsoft edge for this you can pretty much leave everything checked however if there's something specific you know you might want to keep you might want to take a look at it for example if you use microsoft edge or internet explorer and you want to keep your internet history or you want to keep your current open session, like if you have it set to automatically open a certain number of tabs when you close it, you may want to uncheck those. So, for example, if you want to keep your internet history or your download history, you'll want to uncheck those, because what this is going to do is it's going to scan for all these items, and then it's going to delete them off your computer. So if you want anything here, then you're going to want to uncheck it. For example, if you like having, I don't really have this enabled here, but if you like having a list of your recent documents on Windows, you want to keep that. Uh, one thing I do recommend unchecking is your thumbnail cache. This can take up space and it can be good to get rid of if it's going to take up a lot of space. So like when you first run it for the first time, I recommend leaving it checked because it'll clear off a decent amount of space off your computer. But then moving forward, you want to leave it unchecked because then it's going to take longer when you're browsing folders for it to generate file thumbnails. For example, right here, if I go to, let's say, actually that's not going to open anything. If we go to music uh, documents, maybe not. I'm trying to think. Let's just go to pictures. So in order for it to generate these thumbnails of what's in the folders, these are all empty folders, but sometimes it shows what's in them, or this picture thumbnail, it's got to regenerate that whenever you clean it off. So I leave it unchecked. And same thing with taskbar jump lists. If you drag up on your taskbar shortcuts here, it has a list. And for some applications, like Steam here, it has recently opened games. If you leave that checked, it will clear those out. And for Steam specifically, Sometimes it never brings it back, so I leave that unchecked so it doesn't mess with them. And then down here you have other things like empty recycle bin, get rid of your clipboard, memory dunks, dumps, etc. So these are all good to check. And then I also go ahead and check DNS cache. Your DNS cache can sometimes cause issues if websites update in weird ways to where they point. And so it's good to just go on and flush that every now and then. And ideally you're not going to be running this very often anyway. And then there's some other stuff down here, but you don't really need to mess with it. Uh, you can do your research into it, but most of the stuff you don't need to go ahead and clean out. You can also check old Windows installation if you've done a Windows upgrade, so you can check that. So for example, if you came from Windows to Windows 10 from Windows 7 or 8, and you want to clear out some of those files, it will clear out some of them. It won't clear, clear out all of them. Let's take a look at the application tab. Now, this is essentially the same thing, but applied to specific third-party programs. So for example, internet history, uh, cookies, download history, last download location, and session for Google Chrome, I want to uncheck because we use Google Chrome on this computer and we want to make sure none of that gets deleted. And then pretty much everything else here is good to go ahead and clear out. Uh, yeah, so you can either click analyze 
which is going to scan and tell you how much is on your system that it's going to delete, which is cool to get an estimate, but there's no real point to getting an estimate. You can just run the cleaner and it's gonna run the analysis and then clean it up anyway. So I always just click run cleaner. But for example, here I'm a, I clicked run analysis and I'll show you what happens when it completes. Now, in order for it to clean internet stuff related to Google Chrome, it actually has to close the browser. So you can either tell it whether you want it to do so or you can close it yourself. I do both if I am gonna close it because that means that it's for sure closed. However, I often run this and don't worry about Chrome and just leave it open, in which case I check do not show it again so it doesn't pop up and then click no and then it'll just skip it. So on this computer, 33,097 megabytes to be removed, which is about 33 gigabytes of data. Most of that is in the old Windows installation and the recycle bin. So it's gonna get rid of 18 gigs in that old Windows installation folder, which is gonna be big for a lot of people who've upgraded. But keep in mind, this means you cannot go back to Windows 7 or 8 unless you completely reinstall Windows 7 or 8 from scratch. So only do this if you wanna get rid of that for forever, basically. But that's going to tell me that analysis tells me how much is going to be removed and then we click run cleaner this pops up a notification saying this process permanently deletes files are you sure you want to do that well yeah that's kind of the point but make sure that's what you want to do i click don't show it again so i don't have to click too many times and then click ok and it runs the cleaning process now honestly it's not really any faster if you run analysis before running it itself so I like I said always just click run cleaner and then let it do its thing it's gonna clean off a bunch of crap off your computer all right so this process takes a couple minutes but then once it's done your computer is a bit healthier and if we go back out to this PC I have a lot more space on my C drive and my other drives which I didn't pay attention to but the C drive since it's only 60 gigs because it's a solid state drive it's always hurting for space and now it's a bit more clear because we cleared off a lot of this stuff but we're not done one of the more important parts, or one of the important parts, is also the registry cleaner. So go to the registry tab, and if you know specifically what you're doing, you can mess with this, but I just leave them all checked, scan for issues, and it's gonna go through and scan and find a bajillion things that it needs to delete. Don't be worried, this isn't a huge deal, this doesn't really matter. It's just, like I said, a bunch of extra stuff that's lost in the Windows registry, and then you click fix all, you can make a backup if you like. I kind of recommend this. I don't always practice this myself. I don't practice what I preach for it. But I do recommend this as you, you, you click yes and then I'm gonna make a new folder here called registry backups. And then open that up and save it in there. And that's going to save a copy of where your registry is now as well as a batch file to put all of that stuff back into your registry. Just in case you, it deleted something that you didn't want and you need to back, you know, restore that backup in case something weird happens to your computer. This used to be an issue with like Windows XP and stuff, but I've never heard of anyone having issues with that in recent years. There, there's no real reason to. Um, and then click fix all selected issues. I had 297 things that needed to be deleted. And then it goes through and does it and click close and you're good to go. Last thing we're going to cover is the tools tab startup. This is one of the biggest slowdowns for a lot of people's computers as they never do this. And so they have a bajillion programs that they installed that they told, yeah, you can run it startup. For example, the ones in black are the ones that actually start up with this computer. The ones in gray are ones that I have disabled myself because they were all at some point set to start at startup. And there's stuff you wouldn't think would cause problems. QuickTime, Java Updater, uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, Steam, Skype. A uh, printer driver that I don't use anymore. DX Story, C Cleaner itself, which we disabled in the settings. Uh, the Apple Daemon, which is the software for the Apple stuff. You don't want any of that starting up with your computer. You do want stuff that you're going to use at startup. For example, cloud services like Dropbox. You want that enabled. But stuff like HP Software Update, you only want to run that sometimes. So right click and click Disable. Be careful with this if you're not sure about it and if it sounds like it's a real system file then don't mess with it. But if but if it's for a program that you know you've installed that you don't want running at startup or that always pops up annoying pop-ups at you, for example, the Java updater, which you need to keep up to date, but you don't need the updater itself running all the time, you can disable that. Next, go over to scheduled tasks and same kind of thing. We don't need the Adobe updater running. We don't need CCleaner running. We don't need Acrobat updater running. Again, these are all software that you need up to date, but you don't need them the updaters themselves running as long as you're updating manually. That is the important differentiation here. 
And then context menu, this is that right click menu I was telling you about. I want to get rid of a lot of these because these are things that when you right click a file, kind of like I'm right clicking these, they'll have entries for right clicking and you don't want those. So WD stuff I don't want, WD do not want, Adobe Creative Cloud do not want, Dropbox I do want, uh, Creative Cloud I do not want. So you can clear all those out and this will make your computer life a little bit easier. Uninstall tab, uninstall apps that you're not using. Pretty much no matter what. Uh, for example, uh, let me find something I'm not using on this computer anymore. I'm sure there is something I can choose here. Uh, maybe. For example, this Musaland Monitor Series driver. This is for a USB sound card that I'm no longer using. Right click, uninstall, and go through and uninstall it. Because, all right, this one needs a reboot and I don't wanna do that right now, so I'm not gonna do it right now. Uh, let's try. There's something else I can do. do, 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 do. Eh, let's uninstall uTorrent. We don't need that. Uninstall. Remove my settings. Uninstall. You always want to get rid of apps that you're not using regularly. Um, as they take up space on your computer, they have system files in place that you don't actually want. And overall, you know, it's just not good. So it's a generally good idea to uninstall everything that you don't use regularly or stuff that you don't use at all and it will help keep your system in check. Now there is some other stuff, for example, I have a bunch of other versions of, off, of Java that need uninstalled. That's a separate tutorial in it of itself. I'm not gonna mess with it right now. And some of these stupid I just uninstalled Shockwave Player on accident, so that was a mistake. So again, be careful what you're doing. It, it, the list auto-updated and it moved me up. What I was trying to uninstall was Git Office. This is a built-in Windows 10 thing that they keep popping up, and I don't want, so I'm uninstalling it because I don't want it. Same thing with Git Started. Get rid of it. But and then, for the most part, you're pretty good to go. The only other thing I do want to mention is that you do want to keep your apps up to date. For example, this automatically checks whenever I update it or open it for up for getting up to date. Another thing I do recommend that I've recommended in other tutorials is going to ninite.com. Link to that will be in the description below. And select the apps you want to update. Chrome, Firefox, Skype. Uh, what else do I use here? Trying to be quick, trying to be quick. K-Lite Codex, sure. Java, .NET, Silverlight Air, Shockwave, which I just uninstalled. Um, do, 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 Anything that you want to make sure is up to date, select 7-Zip, then choose Git Installer, and it's just gonna download the super tiny EXE that anytime you run it, is going to automatically check for updates for those apps. So just keep that EXE somewhere, run it every month or so after you do your cleanup, and then you're, once you do update all your apps, you are gonna wanna go back into CCleaner and check your startup listings, and just make sure none of those got set to start at startup. But other than that, you're good to go. So this is a basic walkthrough of how to tune up your computer on your own. You don't need Stable ZZ Tech to do it, as long as you can follow these steps. You don't need Best Buy Geek Squad to do it. You can do it yourself, and I'm not gonna try to sell you on stuff that you probably don't need. My name's been Adam Reapos Fox. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If it was helpful for you, smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome tech videos. I will catch you in the next one.